Luke chapter number 4, the gospel of Luke chapter number 4, we begin reading verse number 14, the Bible says this, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, it's good to be in your house tonight. God, we thank you for your good grace. We thank you for your tender mercy, your loving kindness. God, we're thankful for the pardon we received one day. Lord, we realized we was lost, but we called on the Lord. And God, you saved us and washed us, cleansed us, made a new creature out of us. Uh, and Father, we bow these unworthy heads and say glory to God uh, for what great things thou hast done. Uh, Father, we've enjoyed the good singing. We've enjoyed the fellowship before church. And we enjoy your goodness any time we're around you. And Father, we certainly do thank you for the blessed word of God. Uh, now for the next few minutes, I pray you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that, Lord, uh, you would encourage and edify your people. Uh, I pray that we would draw nigh to God, that God might draw nigh to us. Uh, I pray you'd do something supernatural in our hearts. Uh, Lord, we live in a wicked world. We live in a country that's gone insane, uh, a country that was founded on the principles and oracles of the Word of God. Uh, and God, we don't even resemble that anymore. Uh, uh, Lord, the Bible's being fulfilled right as we sit here tonight. Uh, Lord, you said in the last days perilous times shall come. Uh, you said they'd call that which is evil good and that which is good evil. Uh, uh, Lord, you'd say they'd lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Uh, Lord, we're living those days. Uh, we're living in a wicked country uh, where we have politicians wanting to defund the police. Uh, and do away with law and order. Uh, God, we live in a country, uh, uh, Lord, where uh, uh, we have civil liber uh, liberties being taken from us. Uh, we have civic leaders uh, uh, trying to put people in bondage and in fear. Uh, God, we have all the abilities and all the resources uh, uh, to be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. Uh, but God, when we quit seeking Thee, uh, and when we quit depending on Thee, uh, Lord, we see the results all around does. Uh, so Father, your people have dealt with that all week long. Uh, they deal with it uh, on their jobs. They deal with it at the supermarket. They deal with it on social media. They just deal with it in the news. Uh, and now we've come to this oasis, it's the house of God tonight. So God, help us uh, encourage us, strengthen us in our inner man. Uh, Father, be with those that are sick. Be with Brother Bob, Miss Sonny. Be with little Colton, others that are sick. Uh, God, touch them and help them. Uh, and God, certainly be with those that are traveling, those that are away. Uh, but Father, for us here tonight, would you sit down amongst us? Uh, would you do a work? And God will thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Uh, and amen. The passage where we started, uh, we find uh, uh, this is uh, uh, transpires immediately after Jesus has been tempted by the devil in the wilderness. If you know your Bible, you know Jesus went to the wilderness uh, and he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, and while he was there, old Slewfoot uh, uh, came and tempted him uh, in the wilderness. Uh, uh, can I say something just on a side note? Uh, if the sorry no good devil uh, will tempt the Son of God, uh, uh, make no mistake, friend, uh, he'll come after you. Uh, he'll come after me. Uh, he's not afraid of you 
but I. Uh, and he'll try to do everything in his power uh, uh, to destroy your testimony. Uh, he'll seek to distract you from being faithful to the things of God. Uh, he'll strive to discourage you uh, in your walk of faith. Uh, uh, hey, uh, he'll have you deny Christ himself. He did Peter, did he not? Uh, uh, listen, uh, he strives to cause division among the brethren. Uh, uh, why? Uh, uh, because God hates them that sows discord among the brethren. Uh, the Scripture says how beautiful and how pleasant it is uh, for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh, and anything God's for, the devil's against. You mark her down. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, uh, he'll strive to cause you to doubt. Uh, he'll get you to doubt your salvation. Uh, and if you get that nailed down, he'll get you to doubt the will of God for your life. Uh, hey, he's a doubter. One uh, of these days he's going to be thrown off in the wake of fire and he'll be a powder. Hallelujah. Huh? Can I say something else about that sorry devil? He'll cause you, uh, uh, my dear friends, to debate the leadership. Yep. Mm. Yep. Uh, it amazes me how many people have never studied even the Word of God, but they know more than a pastor. Huh? Amazes me how many people uh, 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 have never fasted, never labored, never pri prayed and cried over people's souls, uh, but they know better than the pastor. Uh, who do you think puts those thoughts in their head? Mm. Uh, uh, can I help you with something? 99% of the time when people got a problem with the pastor, the real problem they got is with God. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Huh? Who causes that? The devil. And can I say he does all of that for the sole purpose he tries to damn every sinner that you can reach for God. And if you're not in the will of God, you're not going to reach anybody for God. So the devil knows if you're saved, if you're born again, if you're blood washed, the devil knows he can't get your soul. But he wants to mess you up so nobody else will get saved. Huh? Can I say this? Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices. Just like Jesus fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil always comes when you are at your weakest point. Always. Huh? Man, when you're in revival and things are going good and, you, man, you can't get enough of God and you're ready to charge hell with a water pistol, he knows he can't, he can't douse you right then. But he'll wait till after revival fires start to simmer. And then he'll pounce on you. Huh? Can I say something else about the devil? Not only will he strike when you're weak, but he uses weak-minded people. Mm. Did you ever notice a mature, sold-out Christian never really pops off the mouth much. You know, they, they know when to take it in. They know when to discern when God wants them to do something. But you, you mark her down. Whenever there's any junk goes on around the house of God, it's somebody that's weak. Somebody that's weak-minded. Hmm. Uh, we had a guy show up Sunday night, showed up late, and he wanted to stay and preach to me after service. Hello. Uh, knucklehead. Don't have time for you. Huh? You say, what was that all about? Just the devil trying to just take away from what God's been doing around here. And can I say this about it? Uh, the devil is weakened by the blood of the Lamb and by the Word of God. Amen. Jesus defeated him and sent him, on, sent him away packing saying, it is written. Huh? And I help you, the next time the devil wants to get in your car with you, the next time the devil wants to sit in your lap, the next time he starts whispering uh, uh, lies because he's a liar and the father of it, uh, and he starts uh, uh, whispering lies in your head, uh, uh, just start quoting the Word of God. He'll leave. Uh, uh, and if uh, you can't uh, uh, remember you because you're all messed up, you can't remember a verse or two, just plead the blood of the Lamb. Because, uh, uh, friend, he can't handle that uh, uh, because that's what defeated him at Calvary. But I'm not going to preach on the devil. I'm just going to tell you, that's what happened. He come from being tempted. Now notice some things about this text. Notice, first of all, the power in verse number 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. The Bible says if you'll resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And when you do resist the devil, the Spirit of God gives you an extra portion. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. And see, he's, he's been weak physically, but he comes back strong in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we see that he, he, we see the power of the Spirit of God 
is upon him. Notice, if you will, the praise in verse 15. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Hmm? So we see that he comes back in the power of the Spirit. We see that uh, uh, all of them there in the synagogue is praising him. But then notice the preaching. Verse number 18. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh, 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 he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, uh, and recovering the sight of the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, uh, uh, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now notice Jesus is preaching. First of all, it was endorsed. He said there in verse number 18 that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach. Uh, can I say when God anoints you to preach or endorses you to preach, something's going to happen. Hmm? It's one thing to stand up and ramble off some words. It's another thing to have a touch of God on you. His preaching was endorsed. Can I say something else? His preaching was emancipating. Look what it said. Brother, Grant, Brother James just sang two songs, and both of them talk about the chains being uh, broken. Look what it said in verse number 18. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, uh, and the recovering of the sight to the blind, uh, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Uh, uh, can I say Jesus said, if the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. Uh, uh, when you were lost in your sins, you were bound by sin. Uh, sin owned you, sin controlled you. Uh, and my dear friends, that sin was taking you off into hell. Uh, but when Jesus stepped up uh, and he forgave you of your sins, uh, hey, the bronze were broken. Uh, the chains of sin were broken. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the uh, old timers used to like to uh, uh, say we were on the auction block of sin, but there wasn't any takers. Uh, and Jesus came by and said, I'll pay their price. Uh, and on Calvary, he shed his blood uh, uh, for our propitiation. Uh, and when we called on him, uh, he forgave us and broke the bondage of sin in our lives. Uh, that verse that he's referring to in Isaiah, he said uh, that he would sit those that are blinded give them their sight can I say something Jesus opened the blinded eyes no less than three times in the scriptures the Jews always sought a sign if that didn't tell them he was the Messiah nothing would nobody else can open blinded eyes now, let, let me just, what about all these faith healers on TV first of all you know they're hogwash because they, they want a price If I had the power to heal, I'd put the hospitals out of business. Uh, COVID-19 would be on the run. Mm. Well, how about all these faith healers? Did you ever notice they'll, they'll make somebody's leg longer? One's got a shorted leg, and what they do is slide of hands. They just pull a shoe off his heel, and it makes it look like he grew his leg out. And there's always some old woman in the wheelchair Looks like she's drooling and, you know, having problems. They go over and lay hands on her, and then she gets up and runs around the building. It's amazing, though, but if you watch them and you follow them, that same little old lady goes to every town with them. Uh, she's on the payroll. Uh, uh, but listen, you know what they never do? They never take a blind person and make him see. Hmm? Uh, that's not my notes. I just thought I'd throw that in there, huh? But notice... That he come to deliver the poor. We were poor in spirit. Yep. Notice he come to set liberty those that were bruised. With his stripes we are healed. Yeah. Can I say this world will beat you up. The devil will beat you up. Your own flesh will beat you up. Uh, have you ever got down on yourself? Have you ever thought that, hey, look at me. I'm nothing. I'm low. I'm worthless and all that. Hey, but I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, Jesus loved us in our lowest state. Uh, and he came to where we were. Uh, and hey, it's a blessing to be accepted in the beloved. Uh, and then his preaching uh, not only emancipated folks, but it was encouraging. Look what he said in verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, my dear friends, when he was quoting that, he was talking about Messiah was coming to Israel. Now, the problem with Israel was is they was looking for his literal second coming. 
when he comes and he sits on the throne of Jerusalem and he's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron and he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And friends, that's going to happen. What they didn't see in, in prophecy is that he was going to come the first time by the cross. See, they was looking for the lion. They weren't looking for the lamb. The lion of the tribe of Judah is coming. And my dear friends, isn't it amazing? It was the acceptable year of the Lord because it was acceptable for him to come via the virgin to go to the cross so you and I could have a Savior the next time he's coming. Huh? He's not coming to go to the cross. He's coming to put an end to a lot of this stuff that's going on today. Huh? He's going to right all the wrongs. And can I say, I would love to preach that it's the acceptable year. We don't know the day and the hour when he's coming, but I can look at all that's happening. And friend, we're close. Jesus is coming soon. Now, I'm not going to preach on that. I want to. I really would. I'd love to preach on that. He's coming. But I mean, just turn on the news. You see what's going on in this world? Everything is being set up for the Antichrist. I mean, Jesus is coming for his church. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a wonderful time to live. Do you realize we're living in the days that Paul preached about, that Peter preached about, that John got to see in the future and come back and wrote about? Do you realize we're living in those days? What an exciting time, huh? Well, y'all don't look excited. I know you got, what do they call it, macne? Were you getting acne from the mask? I can't tell if you're excited or not. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's the stupidest thing. But just go somewhere and look at people. They bought a hook, line, and sinker. Hmm? Every expert, even the, all the sites, that can't help you. But look at people. And just go without one and watch people look at you. They look at us like we had AIDS back in the 80s, you know. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Amen. This world will believe anything that somebody, it sounds like they know. If you look at the credentials of Grouchy Fauci, that guy does nothing but lie to people for decades. Well, people will take him as gospel, but you can preach the gospel to them. They look at you like you're a nut. But listen, this thing's winding down. You better be ready. But I'm interested in verse 15. It says, And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of just a couple. Is that what it says? Of all. Can you imagine listening to Jesus preach? Sure they glorified him. Never a man spake like he spake. Huh? Can you imagine him preaching? I mean, we like it when the big preacher shows up. Can you imagine when the big preacher was there? Can you imagine him? I mean, even them guys on the road to Damascus, they said, did our, not our hearts burn within us? Can you imagine Jesus preaching on Jesus? Huh? We just look at the book and try and glean some things about Jesus. He was Jesus. Uh, uh, can you imagine him uh, uh, when he was 12 and uh, 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 he made those scholars there in the temple uh, 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 and they started maybe debating creation. They was debating the gap theory and they was debating this theory and that theory. Uh, and you imagine they say, well... When I spoke, it happened. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what he said? When, when I uh, 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 grabbed the dust of the earth and formed a man and breathed into his eye, can you imagine Jesus preaching about being there? Yeah. Lord have mercy. He was glorified of them all. I can just vision, you know i got a vivid imagination. I can vision this synagogue. Now, it wasn't a real big place, but I imagine it was packed. It's Nazareth. It's where he, he uh, 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 you know, was raised. And, and, and Jordan had a devotion not too long ago on, on Nazareth and how he was disrespected and all those kind of things. But here he is. He's in Nazareth, his hometown. And he just really reads a couple verses, closes the book. But he spoke with so much power and so much authority uh, and so much boldness uh, and then and, and he had so much God on him because he was God uh, when he closed the book uh, they just got beside themselves saying glory, hallelujah, what a blessing they all glorified him well, I can just see him 
having a spell. Can't you see them? I can see Amos running around the building, Phil running around. I can see it. I can see that whole crowd just getting slapped crazy. This is what I want to preach on. I'm thinking about that crowd. I'm thinking about it. he was glorified by them all. This is what I want to preach. I want to preach on getting in on it. I just want to get in on it. I just want to get on that to what was happening around there. Huh? I don't want dead, uh, dry, orthodox religion. Huh? I don't want to talk about the bones of the prophets of old. Uh, I don't want to talk about uh, 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 this one's skirt not being long enough uh, and that fella's haircut not being slick enough uh, and that one's glasses being uh, uh, wired in. Uh, I don't want to talk about I want to talk about him. Uh, I want to glorify him. Uh, I want to get in on what he's uh, doing. Uh, I want to see him high and lifted up. Uh, I just want to bless him and praise him. Uh, hey, i just like to get in on something of that wouldn't you uh, hey I just want to get under the spout where the glory comes out uh, I just want to get so full of God I get the can't help it uh, and just let her roll hallelujah huh? you got to thinking about that I want to get in on the glory they said that he was glorified by them all mm, because there was a whole lot of glory going on you read the rest of the chapter and then they begin to talk themselves out of it and they try to qualify. I've seen preachers, I've seen God get on somebody. Yeah. And then preachers stand in the corner, well, well, God can't use him. I mean, he didn't go to the right school. Wow. Huh? I don't even know his name. Where did he come from? Yeah. I've heard all that junk. Yes, Who cares? God was on him. Hey. I've read the book. God used the rooster to preach to Peter. Used the jackass to preach to Balaam. Uh, God can use whoever, whatever he wants to do. Just let me get around where God's moving. huh? I want to get in on the glory. huh? Can I say I want to get in the glory of his presence? Can I say there's nothing like when God manifests his presence? Uh, now he said in the word of God where two or three gathered, he'd be in the midst. Uh, every time we come to his house, I come expecting him to be here. Uh, but there's just Sundays uh, uh, when he lifts up the blinds uh, and he opens the windows of heaven uh, and he just steps from the glory world into this world uh, and he just makes himself known uh, and he just does the work. Uh, I like being in his presence. Uh, I just want to get in on some of that. Uh, I just want to get in where God's at uh, and just enjoy the presence, Almighty God. Uh, I want to get in on that. Uh, I want to get in on His person. It's one thing to have His presence. It's another thing to have His person. You say, what are you talking about? Well, the Bible makes it clear he's the rock of ages. <laughs> There's sometimes I'm on sinking sand. Uh. There's sometimes I'm on shifting ground. Uh. There's sometimes my world's being earthquaked. Uh. Uh, but I know there's a rock uh, that never moves. Uh. I know there's a rock that's stable. Uh. He's the rock of all the ages. Uh. He's Alpha Omega, beginning and end. Uh. He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. Uh. He changes not. Uh. And when I get on the rock, my world is fine. There is no more troubles. Hey, I read where he's my high tower. I read where he's my buckler. I read where he's my shield. Hey, I read where he's the lily of my valleys. Hey, I read where he's the rose of Sharon. He's the bright and morning star. Hey, it doesn't matter what you're facing. He's the answer. I want a glory in his person. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's wonderful uh, counselor uh, mighty God uh, everlasting father uh, he's the prince of peace uh, I say hallelujah I just want to get in on his person uh, hey, there's nobody like him they've been trying to do away with him for 2000 can you imagine uh, uh, the Democrats have been trying to upset Trump for three years. Uh, hey, I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, this whole world's trying to do away with the evidence of Jesus for 2,000 years. Uh, but he just keeps saving old dear rednecks like you and I. Uh, and we just don't have enough sense to love him back uh, and to tell others about him uh, and want to go to meeting with him uh, and worship him in spirit and in truth. I just want to get in on him, don't you? I want to get on the glory of his presence, the glory of his person, and the glory of his power. There's nothing like when Jesus changes somebody's life. Uh, who we got? We got Mary. 
We got Jack. We got Miss Brandy. We got Miss Crystal. We got Nuthead Me. You know, in the last couple years, the doctor all gave us cancer sentences. But Dr. Jesus said, I got it. Huh? We don't have cancer tonight. We got a good dose of him, but we don't have cancer. Hey, don't threaten me with COVID. I've had cancer. Uh, are you listening? Uh, hey, and I didn't have to wear a mask. Uh, hey, I didn't have to uh, 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 cover my cough, and I didn't. I had cancer. Uh, hey, and if you don't take care of cancer, you're gonna die. Uh, but I got good news for you. Uh, the resurrection and the life stepped in. Uh, hey, uh, there's something about His power. Uh, hey, I had a death sentence one time. Uh, hey, sin was. Uh, uh, all of my life uh, and the wages of sin is death uh, but the gift of God uh, is eternal life through Jesus Christ uh, hey he came to this old sinner uh, saved me uh, gave me eternal life uh, hey I want to get in on his power uh, hey what he's done in some of these kids lives uh, and saving some of these kids uh, what he did in Miss Debbie's life uh, what a blessing uh, just something about getting in when the power of God's showing up uh, uh, I just want to get in mm, can I say this I want to get in on his graciousness oh I like getting in on his glory but I like getting in on his graciousness you know what His graciousness does, Pete? His graciousness says, an old boy whose mom loved him, but she didn't have the best of lives. An old boy whose dad didn't really have much to do with him. But there was a stepdad got involved who didn't have enough sense to take that boy to church. Make that boy work on the church lawn mowers and the church buses. Isn't it amazing you're still working on church stuff, huh? And amazing. But I mean, the world didn't care about you. But God came down there to Louisville where you was. And He saved you. And He changed you. And you, uh, that some people wouldn't want. And some people didn't care about. You know what His graciousness does? Uh, his graciousness says, Pete, uh, anytime you call, I'll answer. Uh, his graciousness gives us access to the throne of God. Uh, hey, uh, Trump sends me emails to donate to his campaign, uh, but he won't pick up the phone when I call. Uh, but I've got news for you. Uh, all i got to say is, Father, uh, and he says, what you need today, son? Uh, I want to get in on his graciousness. Uh, hey, I like going to his throne. Uh, I like uh, I feeling his touch when I'm in prayer. Uh, I like it when he says, it's going to be okay. Uh, he's never too busy. Huh? All that's going on in the world. You think about that. Everything's happening. I mean, he feeds everything. He feeds the grasshoppers. He feeds the worm. He feeds the fish. He feeds the birds. He feeds all the beasts. He feeds all that. Then he grows uh, 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 vegetables so we can eat. Hey, thank God. Uh, he's got cows that we can slaughter uh, and have steak. Hallelujah. Uh, I mean, he grows potatoes. Uh, 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 he does all of that. Uh, he's got it all. Uh, can you imagine having to make the whole world's economy going? Uh, and he's got it all under control. Uh, can you imagine all the angelic beings, uh, the legions of angels, uh, all of the heavenly hosts, uh, all them people just all the time I'm crying holy, holy, holy to him uh, and the angelic choir singing unto him. Uh, I mean, he's always in church. Did you ever think about that? Uh, hey, did you ever think about uh, uh, Brother Donald's calling on him uh, and saying, Lord, I need this. Uh, and Miss Crystal's calling him. Uh, Lord, I need this. And Kenzie and Sammy and Xander now calling on him. Hallelujah, because they got born again. Uh, and Lord, we need this. Uh, uh, can you imagine all of that uh, and all that's going on? Uh, but yet, uh, uh, when you say, Father, uh, hallelujah, he grants you access. Uh, I want to get in on his graciousness. Uh, he's never too busy for you. Huh? What a Lord. I just want to get in on it. Can I say this? I want to get in on his goodness. Oh, everybody says God is good. He's good all the time. But do you ever realize how good he is? Uh, that you and I I think about it. Let me pick it. Where's Miss Jan? 
Miss Janet, think about this. Right now there's about 7 billion people on this planet. Now think about this. This planet is just one speck of all the stars, all the planets, and all the galaxies upon all the galaxies upon all the galaxies. I mean, he flung them all out there and called them my name. And on this one little speck in all the galaxies, there's seven billion people. And God in his goodness says, Miss Janet needs to eat today. Miss Janet needs encouraged today. Miss Janet needs peace today. Miss Janet, and daily he loadeth you with benefits. I say, hallelujah, that's a good God. Huh? I just want to get on His goodness. He's so good that every day His mercies are renewed. And every day He loads me with benefits. Huh? I want to tell you, if there is no eternity, if the scribes were right and all we do is die like dogs and when there's nothing after, after death, which they're wrong, because God made man a living soul, and his soul will live either in heaven or hell for all of eternity. But even if there was no heaven, just the benefits of being a Christian is worth being saved. Amen. Every day, he takes care. Every day. David said he never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Yeah. I ran over. Mama sent me over on an errand last night. I was after decorating. Stinky was on a corner. You know, Stinky. He had this real elaborate sign. I was trying to read it. Something about his car broke down and he lost the keys. I'm thinking, Stinky don't have no car. He don't, he don't have no car. But anyway, he's got all this and all that. And he's, he's hoping somebody comes by and gives him a little change. <laughs> Can I say, I've never had to beg God for anything. Matter of fact, I don't even pray for anything like that. I've read in the Bible where he's, he said, if I seek him first, all them other things he takes care of. I don't have to worry about food in the cupboard. I don't have to worry about gas in the tank. I don't have to worry about clothes on my back. i got more clothes than I need. I, I don't have to worry about shoes on my feet. I don't have to worry about Because every day he loads me up. Huh? Huh? I just want to get in on that. I don't understand folks trying to get out of it. Listen, I told y'all last week down there at Paula Dean's had that ooey gooey whatever stuff, butter cake. I've had two since then. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. It's like Lay's potato chips. One's not enough. You just got to keep going back. Well, I, I, the Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good Amen. if you've ever tasted of his grace and his goodness why would you want to, why would you want to forsake that huh? Lord have mercy I can't get enough I just want to get in on it are you listening huh? can I say this I want to get in on his guidance I've tried doing things my way you might not believe this but I'm a little hard headed <laughs> shut up Marcy I could read your mind. Huh? And where's my Aunt Lynn? You just keep your, you just put a muzzle on it. <laughs> I've tried doing things my way. You know what happens? I always make a mess of it. And here's the thing about God. He'll let you do it your way. But it always comes at a price. Don't you hate having to crawl back to him and say, Lord, I, I'm sorry, I should have followed you. Boy, I'd like to have a dollar for every time I've had to do that in my lifetime. I just want to get in on his guidance. Yeah. Yeah. See, David said it this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Not dried up, dead, COVID-filled pastures. Green pastures, huh? He leadeth me beside the still waters. You know why it's important? Sheep don't drink from troubled waters. He knows where to calm us. 
and get us a good calm drink. Huh? Hey, he says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I just want to get in on his guidance. It's all good. Uh, uh, let's, I know they read this at funerals, but this is a good living chapter. Huh? Uh, you, you just live here in, in Psalm 23. It'll help you. Huh? Hey, and then uh, 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 Brother James sings that line in that song. Uh, uh, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. All they can do is watch me eat. Hallelujah. Huh? Uh, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, I say hallelujah. I want to get in on his guidance. Uh, I like green pastures and still waters. Uh, I like it when the, when the enemies are raging and all they can do is just sit me right there and watch me enjoy the Lord. Huh? Uh, and one of these days, when I do face death's chilly waters, I got news for you, it's only a shadow. Christians don't die, we just go to sleep and wake up in glory. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I just want to get in on His guidance. Uh, when you're following in His footsteps, friend, it's a wonderful journey. Now I thought about this last. I'm just talking about getting in on it. I want to get on, get in on going for him. Hmm. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to sit until he comes. It tells us to go, and it tells us to grow, and it tells us to glow. But it don't tell us to sit around and do nothing. I want to get on, get in on going for him. And can I say I want to go shouting? I want to go out shouting. I don't want to go out some defeated, you know, wimpy Christian. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. Huh? Amen. Can I say this? I want to go sowing. Matthew 13, the parable of sower. Sower went forth to sow. He's called us to be sowers. We need to sow seed, the Word of God. Why? Because it don't return void. There's, it's going to do something. Uh, Haggai said, why is there yet seed in the barn? That's the indictment of many Christians. You got the seed stored up. It's not doing any good in the, in the barn. It needs to be in the fields. Huh? That's why I got a little a real problem with a lot of churches. Lord have mercy. I understand being good stewards of God's money. But I know churches, as we sit here right now, got hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. People are starving to death. Missionaries are starving on the fields. Missionaries can't get Bibles to take to people and share the gospel with them. There are needs upon needs upon needs. I know struggling churches about ready to close their doors. I know people that are hurting. And churches sitting on all that money. You know what happens if, when, when the trumpet sounds and Jesus takes his church out of here? All that money goes to the Antichrist. I sure would rather invest it in the Lord's kingdom than the devil's. Uh, I know people say, you should never be in debt. I'm in debt to my eyebrows and I want the Antichrist to have it all. Let him pay my bills. Hallelujah. Huh? He can have it all. I want to go shouting. I want to go sowing. And I want to go sobbing. Psalms 126 verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him. If you take the seed and you water it in tears, you'll have a harvest. I want to get in on going. Now let me say this and I'll be done. I want to get in on it. I ain't had enough yet. Hmm? I want some ooey gooey with ice cream, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, cherry. Get that down. I want a second helping. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had enough. Hmm? In order to get in on it, first of all, you've got to offer yourself. The Lord's a gentleman. He's not going to beat your door down you know, begging you to deal with him and, and, and to go do work for him. He invites all to come. But see, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. The first step is always on us. If you're going to get in on it, you've got to offer yourself. 
just surrender. Say, here, Lord, I want in on it. I want it. I want to, I want in on the glory. I want in on the goodness, the gracious. I want it all. You got to offer yourself. Can I say, if you're going to get in on it, you have to obligate yourself. Trying to serve God and not be obligated is absolutely impossible. Have you ever heard people stand up and say something like this in church? If I've ever offended anybody, I want you to forgive me. Well, there's no obligation in that. You're trying to ease your conscience. Because first of all, if they're standing up saying that, they know they've offended somebody. And they're trying to take an easy way out. If I know I offended you, I need to come to you and say, Brother, I'm sorry, I offended you. Will you please forgive me? And by God's help, I'll never offend you again. That's the right way to do it. But see, we don't want, we don't want, we don't want to be obligated. People want to serve God, but they don't want to be obligated. They want all the blessings of God without any obligation. Hmm? People say, well, I, I'm all for it in the world. That's why I give money so we can support all them missionaries. Wonderful. What are you doing? No obligation. Got to be obligated. Huh? That's why a lot of people hate their jobs. They're not obligated. They want the paycheck, but they don't want to have to work. So they want to sit around and complain about the company or complain about the boss, complain about everybody all the time. Well, make it better. Roll up your shirt sleeve, make it better. Instead of complaining. Well, a lot of people in church work, they, they don't want to be obligated. They want to come to church, get all the blessings, but that's as far as they want to go. Well, you're not going to get in on it. There's some in all the meetings we've had, the three meetings we've had, they hadn't got in on it. Because they haven't offered themselves and they haven't obligated themselves. The Apostle Paul, when he was Saul of Tarsus, the night he got saved, you know what he said? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? He offered himself and he obligated himself the night he got saved. And you know what Paul did the rest of his life? He got after it. We wouldn't have the gospel today if it wasn't for Paul. Hmm? You got to offer yourself. You got to obligate yourself, and then you just got to be obedient. Mind the Lord. Be obedient to His will. Be obedient to His word. And friend, you do those three things, you can't help but get in on it. So I wonder tonight, who wants in on it? You want in on it? Hey, he's got arms wide open. Says, "Here it is. Come get it, huh? Mulan Labe, come get it. You want in on it? It's up to you." I hadn't had enough. And I promise you in a couple weeks, if you don't get in on it now, you won't be ready for Cody's on. He's a preaching machine. He says, you got to get all in on it. I want it all. So when, when Cody gets here, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be in the clouds, man. I'm going to be beside myself because I want it all. How about you? You want in on it? It's available. Huh? Crude analogy, but I could stand right here and offer free trips to Hawaii. But if you don't get out of your seat and come and get it, you're not going to Hawaii. Right. I'm offering something better than that. I'm offering all, the, all of heaven's blessings in your life and then heaven to follow. Amen. But you've got to want it. Yep. You've got to want it more than you don't want it. I want all in. I'm going, I'm going all in. I want it. How about you tonight? Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always... Thanks for listening.